have you here. Tomorrow, I want to mention, we're going to take you to one of the strangest places in town where one man has gathered the largest collection of movie monster memorabilia in the world, going all the way back to Lon Chaney, Bela Lugosi, and the incredible Boris Karloff's Frankenstein. And that's tomorrow. They don't fade away either. They all go and live together in one big eerie mansion right here in Los Angeles, and we're going to take you there. So, put out the lights, and let's get in the mood. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Ever since Edison invented the moving picture, people, young and old, have lined up for the privilege of being scared out of their wits or awed by the unreal. We sit on the edge of our seats, gasping at the brain children of the monster makers, be they green, gory humanoids or inhuman beasts from the sea, from the earth, from outer space, zombies, werewolves, robots, extraterrestrials, vampires. Ah, yes, vampires those quintessential masters of seduction. You look splendid, Mr. Ackerman. Well, I imagine anyone would wearing Bela Lugosi's Dracula cape. Forrest Ackerman, Hollywood's high priest of horror, has the most complete collection of movie monster lore. Who are these creatures? Well, these are what you saw in 1933 in King Kong, the... Uh, Pteranodon that was trying to fly away with Fay Ray, the oh, yeah. Stegosaurus uh, died, his tail was waggling courtesy of the wizardry of Willis O'Brien, who animated it. The models themselves were built by the late Marcel Delgado. And up here we have from 1931, that is a life mask of Boris Karloff at the time that the great wizard Jack Pierce was making him up as the immortal Frankenstein monster. Now, he had to sit still for about six hours while the amazing Jack Pierce turned him into the Frankenstein monster, the immortal, undying creature so readily recognizable. You remember him in The Bride of Frankenstein and The Son of Frankenstein. And, and uh, above and beyond all makeups that have ever been created in the horror field, I think that the Jack Pierce really did the definitive job way back when with Boris Karloff. And here we have uh, Seven Faces of Dr. Lowe. They uh, were created by William Tuttle and are important in the horror field because uh, Bill got an Oscar that year for his amazing makeup. And we go back to the silent era, the beginning of it all. Can you imagine out of that little makeup box came a thousand faces? Lon Chaney Sr., the man of a thousand faces. He created Eric, the Phantom of the Opera there. And here he was the ghoulish vampire in London after midnight and moving on from the silent era up to modern times and uh, the horror creatures of today 13 years ago that schlachtropus was created by one of the greatest artists of the modern times Rick Baker monster maker when I was a little kid I loved monster movies I watched them on TV all the time anytime there was one on and uh, I just decided about age 10 that that's what I want to do. I, I want to make those things. And those things, like his Oscar-winning American werewolf in London, become the stuff of our most terrifying nightmares. Uh, to meet Rick Baker, the quintessential werewolf maker. Nice guy, but if you listen carefully as he describes himself, you'll detect a little subsurface weirdness. Halloween is the big the big time of year for us, you know, uh, ever since I was a little kid, I mean, I couldn't wait for Halloween. It was more important to me than Christmas. I was the weird kid in the neighborhood that made monsters. I made up most of the kids in the neighborhood with horrible third degree burns and gashes and abrasions and broken limbs. And uh, it, I wasn't allowed in a lot of the neighborhood houses after that. Rick Baker, born to be a monster maker. It was in his blood from the time he was a kid. From his laboratory in North Hollywood, there emerged some of the wildest, most creative, most bizarre creatures ever to chill the spines and coddle the blood of horror movie buffs. That was done with a hand like this, where, whoops, sorry, I was, I was attacking. <laughs> the, uh, these were made up, you didn't see the slits, but uh, mm -hmm. the nails actually, Ooh. Through, the, through the other nails like that. Oh. 
these are his babies. They've won him Oscars and Emmys, as well as recognition in the industry for being one of the best. Witness the fury, the howling, Michael Jackson's thriller, or his incredible American werewolf in London. The cheeks and the brow, and the brow starts to push out, and the cheeks push out, and the whole actual muzzle part starts to push forward. Now, once this head was at its most extreme point, then we changed the camera angle to this head which we call change your head number two. And actually something that's interesting about this is that it's, it's asymmetrical. Like you'll see this side is more human and more in pain and not really enjoying the whole experience where this side is starting to get the, the evilness of the werewolf take, has taken over as a little lamp to the neck and, and actually getting off of it. There's a lever here that we use to open the jaw. So it's like screaming and groaning. Wow. You got the things to open the face? Okay. And then this pulling these levers and the whole face stretches forward. Through, through the course of the, all these different things, we achieved the transformation here. And he eventually ended up turning into this creature, which was the final werewolf here. And this was the, one of the close-up heads that we had. With. You could just bite your head off, actually. <laughs> yes, you could. Did you ever get your finger sniffed? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it could happen. There were times like where I'd be working on the mechanics in here like this, and somebody lets go of the lever. Oh! Ooh. In fact, I, I'm stuck you there. You are? Right? <laughs> <laughs> there.